Ladies and gentlemen, this is the KitchenAid KCO 224 Dual Convection Countertop Oven. It's a premium offering from a likes company that excels in some areas and falls a bit short in others. I'm really excited to get my hands on this product because it could prove to be the ultimate solution for my toasting, light baking, and air frying needs. If you ultimately find this video useful, please consider supporting the channel by using the Amazon Associate link below. It won't cost you any more, but it will earn this channel a small commission. It's basically the only reason I can afford to keep making these reviews. In this video, we're going to run over operation, check out a few of the more advanced functions, measure real usable interior space, verify temperature accuracy, break out the thermal camera to check cooking evenness, see how well it dehydrates and air fries, and then finally draw our conclusions. But before we get going, let's see exactly what comes in that box. We've got a general purpose rack, a baking rack, a baking tray, an air fry rack, the meat probe, and of course the oven itself. All right guys, operation is super simple. Pretty much everything can be controlled with this little uh, dial here. Uh, cycle through your modes, you got toast, bagel, bake, broil, air fry, dehydrate, meat probe, which is an awesome function we'll get into in a few minutes. Convection bake, roast, keep warm, reheat, and proof. Even though I've never proofed bread before, so I probably wouldn't really know what I'm talking about there. Once you select a mode, let's just choose bake. It'll then let you choose a temperature, press it again, and you can choose a time. Then when you do hit start, it'll preheat, and then the timer will start uh, after that preheat temperature is reached. The very first thing I want to demonstrate for you guys is this product's standout feature, the included temperature probe. It allows one to cook, well, anything until a desired point on the Fahrenheit scale is reached. Right here, I'm going to use it to reheat this chicken breast. It's very simple to employ. Just place the probe in the meat and then plug the other end into the oven. The appliance will then preheat to your specified temperature and then switch to a display that cycles between the probe's target temp and its desired one. It's really an awesome setup. In the meantime, you get to do other things and whatever you're cooking will be getting a nice even heat from the convection fans. When the temperature you've specified is reached, a little alarm will sound and the oven will turn off. When you're done with it, the probe itself stores in an included case, which is magnetic. This means that when not in use, it conveniently snaps on the side of the oven. Next up, I've got a little frozen waffle action to demonstrate. I specified frozen because this product is smart enough to alter the cooking time when that parameter is input. Simply select the cooking mode of toast, enter the number of slices, your desired toast shade, and hit the frozen button, then press start. The appliance then sets the time, lights a frozen indicator, and gets the job done to perfection. Now I'm not sure where everyone's opinion falls on this next point, but there doesn't appear to be a clear line in the sand between a toaster oven and a countertop oven, but to my way of thinking, it mainly comes down to size, and this KitchenAid is quite large, making it more oven than toaster. Further complicating this is the fact that there really isn't an apples to apples way to compare sizes among different manufacturers. Some measure everything inside while others measure the space above the rack. To my way of thinking, the correct way would be the height from the rack to the elements, side to side and back to back. Using this method, I get 12 inches deep by 15 inches wide by 6.25 inches high for a total usable interior volume of 1,125 cubic inches or 0.65 cubic feet. By comparison, the Calphalon Court, another very popular oven on Amazon, measured a total of only 736 cubic inches. In other words, the KitchenAid KCO 224 is about 50% larger. This also means that for those looking to use this product as more of an oven than a toaster, it's ideal. In fact, it can even fit a standard quarter sheet baking tray. Next, I'm going to employ a calibrated thermocouple to take some preheat and temperature accuracy tests. So, let's see how quickly the KitchenAid can go from room temperature to 300 degrees. Ready? Start. Two point four one seconds. I'm actually surprised at how fast it came up to temperature. By comparison, my cheap Oster toaster did it in 2 minutes 31 seconds, but it's also a lot smaller. I would have expected such a large countertop appliance to heat slower. 
The next thing that we're going to look at is how evenly it cooks. Nobody likes a product that gets one side hot while the other remains relatively cool. To test this out, I'm going to break out my thermal camera. It's extremely sensitive, able to see differences as small as 0 0.06 degrees Celsius. It also gives us a good idea of where this oven vents heat as it operates. For this simulation, we'll cook this piece of cedar, used for planking salmon, for 10 minutes. Then we'll take a look at it with the infrared camera. And this is the result, a really nice performance. I'm not seeing any differences to speak of side to side. The two bright spots here and here are actually dark knots in the wood, so it's to be expected they'd absorb a little more heat. The final thing I'm going to dive into with our temperature measuring instruments is accuracy. Basically, if I set it to bake at 300 degrees, how consistently can it hold this temperature? Unfortunately, after looking at the results on the thermocouple and after 10 minutes, I've got a very disappointing story to tell. The oven hit 390 and then cooled to 292 degrees before reheating to 350 and then falling again. This means that we were anywhere from 90 degrees over to 8 degrees under. So despite doing very well on our first two tests, preheat time and cooking evenness, the KitchenAid fails when it comes to accuracy. Of course, this product isn't limited to toasting waffles and cooking pieces of wood. It's a true multi-function machine with a lot more to offer. Here I'm utilizing the dehydrate function to remove moisture from a bunch of peppers my girlfriend grew over the summer. It's a slow process, taking on the order of 8 to 12 hours, but worked well nonetheless. The result being several dollars worth of dried peppers at the cost of several dollars worth of electricity. But hey, it was fun and they're organic. On the other end of the health spectrum, we've got the frozen french fry. My personal style of cooking is what I'd call lazy. I'm really happy this product makes air frying a primary concern. They advertise a dual convection system that won't require any flipping of the food. After setting the temp to 400 degrees and the time to 17 minutes, I let it get to work. At the end of the cycle, the results were excellent, a nice crisp exterior and a warm soft interior. If you didn't know better, you'd almost believe these were cooked in boiling oil. On the air frying front, we've got a winner. So overall, what do we think? The KitchenAid KCO 224 has great build quality, is easy to use, and personally, I think it looks very nice. It's also very good at generating even heat and gets hot quicker than you'd think. However, temperature accuracy is a genuine area of concern. A 98 degree swing when the temp is set to 300 is a really poor showing. Somewhat offsetting to the overall lack of accuracy in oven temperature is the inclusion of a temperature probe. Off camera, I compared it to my ThermPro wireless unit and found it relatively accurate. I love that they included this feature and in my opinion, it alone adds a lot of value to the product. Then there's what I would term advanced functionality. Things like air frying and dehydrating work great. If you want to make a quick meal, this product should help you get that done. And finally, I really like this product's physical size. As a second oven, its large usable interior volume should be a nice complement when things get busy around the holidays. Okay, that's all I had for today. Take care.